So when I first started using Blender, um, I did not know what I was doing with the actual 3D part. Like I was making a lot of terrible renders. Um, like if you opened up the 3D file and looked around, you would just, it was complete garbage basically. But what I would do is render it and then bring it into Photoshop and kind of just slam it hard enough with these settings that I'll show you here to the point where it was actually not bad. And that was as a complete noob. So it's still, um, it's still a really uh, essential part of my workflow. And it just, it makes your images look so much better if you can run it through the right settings. So I'll show you that here. So yeah, let's, let's go. Okay, so here's what we're starting with. And what we're gonna end up with is this right here. So I'll just show you kind of layer by layer um, what I did, what I was thinking. And uh, yeah, let's go. So the first thing I did was I added this blur layer. Um, what this is, is if you duplicate your layer, blur it, and then just change the blending mode over to screen. That's basically what this is. And uh, you can just lower down the intensity here. Next thing is this mist pass. Um, so what you do is you just drop that into Photoshop and then head over to the channels tab right here. Control click on any of these thumbnails like this. And then what that'll do is it'll make a selection just based on the bright parts of this image. So what you can do is just make, just make a new layer and then create a mask with that selection still active. So just hit this button right here. And then what that's gonna do is, I'll just take the uh, mist pass off. What you can do is just take any color that makes sense here, that like I'll just take this blue right here, and then just fill that color onto this layer with, uh, like on the layer with that mask you just made. So like, just fill that in like this. And then you can just go up to image, uh, go to adjustments, curves, with the mist pass, or with, sorry, with the mask selected, go to curves. Uh, and then just dial in exactly the depth you want it to be in here. So I did something like this for the final one. Just hit OK and then change the blending mode over to screen. And then you can just apply that mask again. So we'll just yeah, apply it and then create a new mask. And then you can just brush it in wherever you want like this. That's exactly what I did here. And then the next thing I did here was uh, curves adjustment layer just to make the edges kind of darker. So again, it's pretty subtle, but just having those spots a bit darker just kind of brings your focus towards the main, the main thing we want to look at here, which is obviously this glowing thing in the middle. The next thing is this lens dirt. Um, this is a really nice way to just make it feel less like a render and more like, uh, like it was captured from an actual camera rather than just captured by, you know, your computer. So what this is, if you just search for this right here, Action VFX Lens Dirt Free Pack, you'll probably find this exact pack here. And it's just a bunch of stuff like this, just kind of lens dirt, like blur it out lens dirt. Like throw that onto your image here. Um, change the blending mode over to screen again so it gets rid of all the black areas of the image we don't want. And then what I like to do is just mask in this image over, just kind of paint it in over the areas that are really bright. So it kind of looks as if the these light like this light here is so bright that it's kind of illuminating dirt on the camera lens. So the next thing is this. So the camera raw filter, this is where like most of the change is going to happen. So if there's one thing that you should learn here, or one thing you should tr start doing here, it's using this camera raw filter or Adobe Lightroom is basically the same thing. You can use that too. I just like doing it in, in here because it's right beside all these other adjustments that I've been doing already. Okay, so how you do this is you can only apply this filter to one layer. So what you have to do is you have to merge all of your layers together and duplicate it into a new layer. So you're not destroying your old layers, you're just uh, duplicating them and then merging them into one single layer which you can apply this filter to. Uh, and there's a shortcut for that. So if you hold Control, Alt, Shift, E all at the same time with the top layer selected, uh, that'll do that. So Select the top layer, Control Alt Shift E, uh, duplicates and merges all your layers together into one new one. And then you can go straight into the camera raw filter here, but you should not do that because you won't be able to edit your changes later. So what you should do is press this one here, press Convert for Smart Filters, click that, and then go into the camera raw filter. So what that does is now you can go back at any time later and make 
and tweak any of the sliders you're about to change in the camera raw filter. If you don't convert it for smart filters, once you hit OK, you won't be able to go back without uh, like undoing everything. It just ruins it. So then you can go into the camera raw filter and then make any adjustments. When you hit OK, now you can just open up this drop down right here and you can double click on the camera raw filter and you can go back and you can change any of the settings you made here. Okay, so let me show you, I'll just run through uh, all the settings that I did in the original just so you can see what I was kind of thinking here. So my approach here is just kind of move stuff around, like move a slider and if it looks better, then you keep it. And if it looks worse, then just put it back to where it was, you know, don't keep it there. After using this for a while, you'll kind of get a feel for what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. But I'll just kind of show you what I did for this one. But just keep in mind, it's going to be completely different depending on what image you're editing here. So you could copy all these sliders and it probably won't work for your image. You'll have to just play around with it and figure out uh, what looks good for different, different types of images. For this section here, it's mostly about just, yeah, just, just what I said. Like, just move it. If it looks better, keep it. If it doesn't, then put it back. So just, yeah, a little bit brighter, a little bit more contrast. Highlights are coming down a little bit and then the whites are just coming up a little bit. With this, if you hold Alt and you move um, the sliders here, for the whites, you can see it's showing you where uh, the like these pixels are turning absolutely white and where you're starting to lose information. So I'll, I'll just bring that up just to that point where it's starting to turn all the way completely white, and then I'll leave it there. Same thing for the blacks. If you hold Alt and then move this slider down, you can see it's showing you exactly where it's starting to turn all the way black and um, I'll just bring it just down to that point right there. Okay, this next section here, we're adding a little bit of clarity. So I always, almost always like to add a little bit of this. Sometimes it's cool to go the other way and take this away, but most of the time it looks cool taking this up a little bit. Be careful taking this too high because it does, it just gives you a, a bad clarity kind of weird look if you take it up too high. So just be careful with that and don't go too extreme with it. This is kind of important, adding a bit of saturation. So I pretty much always uh, crank up the saturation a decent amount. So um, yeah, you can see what that's doing, just making the colors more intense. Uh, we're adding a little bit of sharpening here. Sometimes I go like up to like 100 with this. Uh, that's probably too much though, but um, just taking this up a little bit just brings out some more details and just looks nice. Um, I don't think I touched the color mixer, although sometimes this is a fun thing to play with. And same thing with the color grading. Sometimes I'll add a bit of blue into the shadows, uh, but it, it's already so blue here that, that I didn't need to do that. Okay, the next thing I did, this is important here, um, adding grain to your renders. So this might seem counterintuitive because if you're like me, you're used to denoising your images and removing all the grain, but here we are adding grain back onto our image. So what's going on here? The reason I'm doing this is because render engine grain just doesn't, even though, yes, it's grain, it's, it's technically the same thing here. It's, it doesn't look good. So cycles grain, for example, it's uneven and it just has a certain kind of look that it doesn't look the same as a camera grain looks. So what I do is I denoise my images. So you can see if I take this off, it's a uh, perfectly smooth denoised. And then I'll add in grain here in Photoshop, like a nice camera grain over top of this. And that, again, just gives it a more natural kind of look like it was captured from a camera rather than captured from your PC. Another thing I'm doing here, or another thing I do sometimes is I take down this vignette slider just to make the edges uh, nice and dark. Um, but here I'm not really doing that. It's on, for some reason it's on minus two. It's like, that's not doing anything basically. But that is uh, an important part in a lot of images. Finally, at this calibration section, um, this is basically just adding more saturation, what I'm doing here, but again, play with these sliders, and if it looks better, then just go with that. Okay, so that makes a big difference there, just uh, running it through the camera raw filter. So like I said, if there's one thing that you're gonna do here, one thing you're gonna learn from this, it's use this camera raw filter trick. Um, so you could stop there, but what I like to do is really just max this all the way out. So I'm just adding a color lookup after that. Uh, the way you get these is click this half circle button at the bottom here, and then just pick uh, color lookup. 
and then just choose any one of these and then you can just scroll through them and you'll have to lower down the like the intensity because they're all pretty strong and yeah just go through these and pick one that looks cool so that's exactly what I did here I just went with uh, this one and then yeah just it's on 45 percent so if you go all the way up it's just gonna wreck it but keeping it a bit more subtle is uh, gonna look good and the last thing here is um, a pretty subtle curves layer here so this is just making the uh, like the mids and the highlights a little bit brighter. Yeah, but this is really like look how almost flat this curve is. You know, it's not a huge adjustment. Um, so, like I said, all these subtle things we're doing here really do add up to a pretty big difference in the end. Okay, so yeah, hopefully you can see now why using Photoshop or doing something in post is so important because. You saw the before and after, you know, it it really can take your image from something that's pretty boring to something that actually looks quite good. So if you learned something, um, like the video, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and peace.